yeah, getting this thing started. How would you describe what it is that you do? You know, what is Earth Soul Garden all about? Sure. Um, so I guess as a way to describe it, I would describe it as a holistic guide to the earth. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I've been working with people for a couple years now and I look at it as three different levels. We have the body, the mind, and the soul. And I've worked with people on different levels. And ultimately the goal is to integrate all these aspects to, awaken your true potential your full self however you want to call it but just yeah navigating there's really like no guidebook on this earth and so it's kind of been my own exploration to how do i navigate my own issues and everything and then ultimately people kind of notice that and then they start asking me for advice and start asking me to help them and it kind of just snowballed and here we are here we are <laughs> on a podcast talking about it yeah <laughs> yeah so i want to get into what exactly that is the mind body spirit healthy relationship i feel like that might be pretty in depth oh i mean yeah yeah <laughs> it's every that embodies everything yeah yeah it's tough so i mean could you give us maybe a general description of what it means to have that healthy triad of mind body spirit connection sure um when working with people i think the easiest way to start is with the body because yeah. the body there's very uh what do you say like objective truths like you're objectively healthy you're objectively overweight you yeah can stretch this far you can run this far like there's very easy guideposts and like goals you can set so starting with that i think that's the easiest way because when you get into the mind and the soul it gets a little more tricky a little more ethereal yeah a little harder to nail down impossible to nail down really yeah so once we get the body in a good uh direction a good momentum yeah I think it's easier to tap into the mind and then tap into the soul once you have this like orientation towards life like you're actually investing in yourself you're going down this road of self-improvement or however you want to call it and yeah from there it kind of gets easier to step into the mind and step into the soul i know what you mean the body serves as a foundation for one to go deeper. It's like the starting point to self-development. And then eventually, mm -hmm. if you really want to know what self you're developing, you can go deeper with the solid foundation of a healthy body. The uppercase S self-development gets pretty deep mm -hmm. if you really want to go that far. That's how it started off for me. It was just general exercise. Just generally wanted to feel good, right? I think a lot of people can attest to that. And then mm -hmm. it was through yoga, like asana practice, just doing that. I've come to realize that yoga is a lot deeper than just a healthy body. <laughs> it's, sure. um, yeah, the body is a foundation. That's how I like to see it. It's a foundation that serves as trajectory or like you said, a sort of momentum or it can be momentum into finding out really what you are and really what the self that you are developing is mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying it's um yeah i think that's a good point that's where it all starts it starts right here man <laughs> that's, right here yeah one of my issues with the spiritual community and non-duality and that stuff is they try and deny the body and they try and deny yeah like you, your existence basically <laughs> and it makes it easy like yeah you can just ignore everything i guess and if it makes it helps you whatever and i got trapped in that for a while then i hold on duality kind of thing yeah and i think it's true and it's important but it's also you're ignoring your physical being and when yeah. you're healthy and you're happy like i don't think people realize when they've never been he healthy how good you can just feel just being alive like amen it's powerful it is something that not a lot of people talk about how important it is to be healthy because if you're struggling physically 
it's tough to it's tough to see beyond the body because I feel as though that is part of the journey is the whole non dual perspective. But in order to do that, you actually have to have a healthy body so it doesn't constrict your sense of perspective. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so you have to work with it, not against it, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like to say my ego is my amigo. I don't try and kill it. I don't <laughs> try good. and like ignore it. Yeah, I just want to be friends with it and like embrace all of who I am. And then yeah. that allows me to be of service and yeah, exist. Exist. <laughs> exist uh, effortlessly. Exist in a... Yeah, so let me ask you this one. What is different about this existence now that you have this foundation of mind, body, spirit connection, this relationship, this um, this whole different lifestyle? What is different, would you say, about the way that you conduct yourself or just overall life altogether that you could describe? Yeah, I mean, the difference between where I was 10, 15 years ago to now is night and day. Like, yeah. Now it's like I lean into challenges, I lean into difficulty, and I embrace that like growth that occurs. That's why it's Earth's soul garden. We're growing when we lean into these challenges, and like, then you can lean into the challenges of the collective and see where we are. Like, we have a lot of work to do, a lot of things that need help. So, yeah, it's like you're not, I'm not worried about the challenges or the issues of the world or my own personal life. I just, I have this objective view that I can kind of step back, look at it from not being attached to all the things that I was attached to when I'm like younger, like looking at my old posts from 10 years ago. It's so cringe worthy. I'm just <laughs> yeah. like, what are you saying? Like, what yeah. are you, where's your head at? But now it's like, I'm sure 10 years from now, I'll look back on this and be like, what, what are you doing? So it's just, <laughs> Part of the game. <laughs> it's part of the game. Yeah. yeah. Continual rebirth, continual renewal. That's how I like yep. to see it. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you feel as though there is a sense of adventure that comes from this newfound perspective? Uh, maybe a sense of newfound purpose that you find sure. in your life? Yeah. And that, the ironic part, I think the biggest adventure is moving from your head to your heart. Mm. It has nothing to do with the outside world, really. Like the outside world will change and it will be a mirror but the more loving you can be the more you can embody that love and that's share it. that that's like the craziest adventure of this life <laughs> i think that's what it's all about mm -hmm. simply all you need is love they tried to tell us back in the 60s <laughs> yeah everybody everybody knows it but to actually uh so i have three levels i have awakening integration and then embodying Oh. So to awaken to that, knowing that all you need is love is one thing, but then to integrate that into your life and then actually embody it, it's like a process that we have to go through. Yeah, I have a similar blueprint. Mine's a little simpler. It's two steps. It's like you get the glimpse and then you work with the glimpse. You work to you work to actually embody it. But I like yours. The You have a little bit of a bridge in between the glimpse and embodiment. It's the mm -hmm. actual, you could say work, I guess. Is that what you would call the integration period? Like yeah, the, the rituals and habits that we change in our life? Yeah. Integrating yeah. that awareness, integrating into your day-to-day, -day, seeing how you react and how you could have reacted differently. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I feel is it's all about. And that's what I feel the non-dual community, the radical non-dual community misses out on. It's like, it seems like they just focus on the glimpse part. They just focus a little too much on theory. And that's all good and well. That's part of this. That's one stage, stage one, like we said. But then it's like, okay, what are you going to do with that now? <laughs> now mm -hmm. what? And they would say, well, there is no now what? Nothing exists, yada, yada, and platitudes like that. But to me, I'm like, okay, yeah, I get it. I fully get it, but I'm still Gary doing my Gary stuff. So what is... What does Gary have to do now with this, this sense of knowing, this understanding? And mm -hmm. I feel as though that's the important part. It's like, really, what are you going to do with it? Because if not, it doesn't mean anything. Then it's just another theory. It's just another philosophy that's out there that you could, just doesn't mean much. So, really? yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that, man. Embodiment is really what it's all about. If not, then it's just pointless, to be honest with you. 
<laughs> mm -hmm. And it's a paradox that our mind really can't wrap our head around. All the truths are paradoxes. So to to be and not to be, it's both. Yeah. Like, which takes a while to really. I mean, ultimately, you can't wrap your head around it, but you like yeah. get this knowing of oh, this is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a dance between to be or not to be. It's a dance mm -hmm. between form and formless. Yeah. Yeah. It's this Shiva and Shakti. It's this, uh, we come to find that the self, what we call ourself is not this. It's not just the body. It's not something that's concrete. It's like what we actually are is somewhere between a constant energy and nothing at all it's quite it, you can't pinpoint it we're trying to pinpoint it with words right now it's futile yeah but it's i was gonna say multi-layered maybe but For sure what we are has a lot more going on than meets the eye a lot more than just the five senses from what we've been told our whole life mm -hmm. this there's like a hierarchy in a way of what we actually are. And when you that works cohesively, when the, all the parts work cohesively, some say there's different layers, there's different dimensions, different realms, like the astral realm, the ethereal realm, who knows? If you want to look at it maybe in a simple form, like I said, form and formless, when the form works with the potential energy of the formless, I feel as though the form expresses itself in a lot more refined manner, right? Like a manner that is conducive to flow going with the flow a sense of momentum in the form rather than before if you don't know who you are it's resistance it's like entropy you're going against the grain but when you really figure out this sense of formlessness that goes beyond words that i'm trying to describe that i'll never be able to describe it's like you said a sense of knowing and also i feel guidance there's some kind of like it's intuitive guidance it's intuitive mm -hmm. guidance that goes beyond rationale that helps one dance the dance in their day-to-day -day life. It's powerful. I call it uh, magical thinking or quantum <laughs> thinking. Yeah. Like operate in this 3D way where, all right, I got to do this. I got to go here and do this and, and I'll get this. Or when I started operating this magical way and I started putting myself out there, like what came back was so beyond what I could, magical. I could never imagine it. Yeah. yeah. It's like, ma it's magical. It's quant. <laughs> it just goes on these ways and I get invited to things and things happen that I would never, I could never imagine. And yeah. then through that, that's the guidance. Like you said, like you get these hints, you get these signs, synchronicities that happen Yeah, when you're open to it. And when you're not open to it, you're just going to be stuck in this mundane rut which most people are but when yeah. you open yourself up to that that's when this like whole new world opens up and you're like mm -hmm. what what yeah. are we what is this what is this realm yep that's when the fun starts for sure mm -hmm. yeah and you're right it is it only leads to more questions that's the thing <laughs> yeah i, I might have said before you should figure out what you are but no the only thing you figure out is that you never figure out really what you are but that's the good news that's how i like to see it I revere the mystery in my being. And that's mm -hmm. the only thing we can really conclude is that it's a mystery. <laughs> yeah. But that's the beauty, man. That's what makes life fun, I feel. Mm -hmm. Magical. A magical life. It really is. I and feel the, it. <sighs> the Go ahead. thing that non-duality is missing out on is that creativity. Oh, like, yeah. We, we get to create. We get exactly. to. Exactly. That's part of the magic. Yeah, it's part of the magic. Absolutely. Like. If I'm just sitting in my room meditating, like, sure, that's great. But then I can also build a podcast. I can build a house. I can build art. I can like, anything. Yeah, all these things mm. that aren't part of the non-dual world. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. <sighs> I don't want to talk too much shit about non-dualists. I talk to a lot of those people, but I. It's just feel fun. You. I mean, it's just. I've been there. I got stuck there. So I have to mm -hmm. like just put it out there like, hey, there's more than this. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's more than nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what it is, is because that is like, I feel as though a very strong attachment is being attached to unattachment. 
<laughs> you have mm -hmm. to be very careful in that regard. I see the radical non-dual scene as cult-like, and they're just they're just attached to being unattached. It's that simple. It's like they think they figured it out because that's what the mind wants. The mind wants like, oh, I figured it out. That's this is everything. I'm good. And them figuring it out is another attachment. Them figuring it out to mm -hmm. the whole non-dual lingo is just another attachment that's veiling itself in unattachment. I hope I'm making sense here. It's hard to explain. But it's like mm -hmm. you can either be attached to the world, which a lot of people are. That's the popular paradigm. Attached to the Maya, the matrix. Or you can also be attached to the formless as well. You have to, like I said, balance those two worlds within to fully be a refined being. If not, then you're going to suffer just as much being attached to the formless as you are to the form. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. That's like a, the next step, I feel, as though in the evolution of our being here as a human. And I think that's a pivotal part. I think the people that are attached to formless, it's a noble pursuit, right? It's like true. I get it. It's, it's not <laughs> not true. Yeah. Like, but there's more. There's, but yeah, but you're missing out. So. You're missing out. Exactly. But I think it comes in time. You know, you were there. I've been there. So I, I think it just comes in time as part of the process. I'm not judging. I'm just For sure. saying, yeah. just throwing it out there from observation, self-observation, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, man, uh, like I said, I don't want to talk too much shit about the non-dual people. Yeah, I right. might have some people tuning in that are into it. They can be pretty <laughs> harsh too in the comment section. Oh yeah, they're <laughs> crazy. Well, let me ask you this one. Stepping back a little bit. How do we even get on this wavelength? Step one that we described, where does this come from? If we can describe maybe in a general sense, or you can describe your own journey. How do we even get the glimpse into what we're talking about right now? Mm-hmm. Um, you're talking about like, what is your purpose, finding your purpose and whatnot. I think my favorite way to look at purpose is become the person you needed when you were younger and offer mm. that to the world. Cause we all have, everything is imperfect. Like we have so many, like nobody comes in the world unscathed. Like you're yeah. going to, something's going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's just the nature of this game. And so finding out okay, what did I need when I was younger? Like, for me, I didn't feel safe in the world. Like, just part of my upbringing. My dad was a federal drug agent. So wow. they told me, like, hey, there's cartel members that are mad that we locked him up in jail and you might get kidnapped. Wow. And I was just a little kid with, like, a knife in my bed trying That's to fall wow. asleep. Like, what? <laughs> like, so I just had this pressure of not feeling safe and wow yeah so like how how do i become safe and then eventually i learned about meditation i started got involved in jujitsu and like i just grew from that and ultimately now i can relate with people that are in unsafe environments and i can offer like this is what i did this is what you can do mm. and it doesn't matter what it is or whatever situation you come from like there's going to be something you need <laughs> to work on yeah. and then you can help others in that same respect yeah do you feel as though that in one way or the other all of us are put in delusions of unsafe environments from childhood not everybody's dad was a federal agent where you have to hold a knife sure. in bed. But do you <laughs> yeah. think do you think we all have our own situations that sow the seeds of you're not safe and that is taken into adulthood? And essentially the spiritual path is like undoing those knots. For sure. I mean, just being alive, like you have to survive. So on yeah. some level, everybody has to survive, like mm -hmm. whatever it is. You gotta find food, you gotta find shelter, you gotta figure out yeah emotional stuff you gotta figure out the mental stuff like yeah everybody has some form of yeah pain and i think we choose it on a soul level as well yeah wherever we are born whatever time we're born all that decides this blueprint that you're coming into the world with these lessons to learn so you're never a victim mm -hmm. like you chose this on a soul level like you want to learn these lessons you want to not be like you want to learn how to become free from these situations mm -hmm. so. yeah 
as part of the journey. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's a big difference too, is going from the victim mindset into how is this happening for me? How was this from a higher perspective, a greater perspective for my greater good? Seeing that along the way really, really frees up one and really, um, how do I put it? It's just, it's just priceless being able to see that because you can take that with you throughout your entire life from then on. Like once you can see that, that doesn't go away. The struggle doesn't go away, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. You can really not spiritually bypass. It's not spiritually bypassing. It may seem like it, but it's just like you transmutate the energy. You start to work with your struggle more. You work with your suffering more in order to alleviate your suffering ultimately. But just, um, yeah, just find a little bit of flow with one struggle in life and knowing that actually you are safe. No matter what happens, it might not seem like it on the surface level at first, but it really is all happening for you in your greater good, your soul's greater good, their higher consciousness is greater good, your higher self's greater good. Mm -hmm. That's the big difference is seeing that you're not just your body suffering here. There's something else, a higher part of what you are that is using this to grow into almost like another being, almost like to metamorphosize into something else, right? That's um. It's not exactly easy to see that, but once you do see it, you don't unsee it. Yeah, it's like getting those glimpses, like you said. Like, I remember one of my downloads I got was just leaving my body. I ate five grams of mushrooms alone in the dark and just left my body completely. Just, I don't even know where I went, the astral realm, whatever. Yep. And then I came back into my body and I laughed for 10 minutes, just, oh, I can't <laughs> die. Like, even if I die, I'm not dying and just. Mm -hmm this relief and then the integration of yeah like working with this glimpse like okay how does this apply to my life like how do i act now that i know this yeah all right so let's go down that route how have you don't have to talk about it if you don't want to i understand but you mentioned it how have know. psychedelics maybe specifically magic mushrooms affected you and affected this realization for you you know how would you even describe what the power is of psychedelics yeah they are my teachers whatever plant medicine if i approach them with reverence and as a ceremony that i can yeah look at them like teachers like this earth yeah. teachers these yep. cosmic teachers that mm -hmm. were here to help us and so yeah, I mean, I grew up with Terrence McKenna on YouTube. That's how I found the old five grams in the dark kind of <laughs> the heroic house. I had no idea what I was stepping into or what that was, but mm -hmm. I was in a lot of pain at the time and I needed like I just felt like this need to like find check out this avenue. And yeah, yeah it totally Yeah, it changed everything. It changes and, everything. It changes yeah. everything. <laughs> Terrence McKenna says that we have how do I put this? I'm going to butcher his words. We have this, we have the answer, right? We have it. Like all, of, we have questions of, is there more? Are we alone? Is this the only realm? Is this it, right? And he said, we have it. It grows in the earth. You just need to take it. Five grams of mushrooms in the darkness will do it for you. We literally have the answer to is there more pretty much? It might lead to many more questions for sure. But to me, personally speaking, what it's done is it's just opened up the doors of perception, as Aldous Huxley would say, to the realization that there's way more than meets the eye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like a huge confirmation. Sorry, go ahead. No, that just opens that magical door where yep. you stop. You stop caring about the, not caring, but you stop operating in the mundane and then you start operating in this magical way. Yeah. Yeah. From mundane to magical. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, truly. And it's so hard to put into words, right? We're speaking about it now. I'm sober. I don't know about you, yeah. but it's like, <laughs> it's hard to actually convey the power of these things unless you're actually in the darkness on five grams because there in that mindset it's so apparent 
And it's more than just getting high. It's more than just getting drunk or trying to escape. If anything, it's not an escape. It's a, uh, what's the opposite of escape? It's like an inward journey. It's the total opposite of escape. It's not like that at all. To someone that doesn't know any better, they may see it termed a drug. It's a schedule three, schedule two something drug, illegal. schedule something that shouldn't be scheduled. Yeah. Drug that's mixed in with other, you know, meth, heroin, Cocaine, real drugs <laughs> real drugs that are escapes yeah. it's such a disservice to humanity so to one that doesn't know any better it may seem like that but once you're once you do it and you approach it with reverence and respect and you do it in the right manner you're like whoa this is this is it this is the sacrament i do fully see these things as sacraments that may be religious um lineages in the past actually I mean, you, maybe absolutely there's they definitely did. mushrooms <laughs> growing with pictures of jesus like yeah exactly buddha they has a did. mushroom head like mm -hmm. yeah that's there most likely <laughs> most likely where all of these things came from all of these wavelengths these scriptures came from is just mystery schools it's just people in small groups finding out these mushrooms they're like hey man uh we should write down some of the revelations <laughs> that we're getting and that becomes religious text I mean, it makes sense, especially after you go into the psychedelic experience and then you say, read the Bible or you read uh, the Vedas. It's yeah. like, oh, oh, of course. Yes. <laughs> That's what they're talking about. Yeah, man. Very powerful stuff. We have it. We have the answer. And to anyone listening, I, if anyone's interested in psychedelics and haven't done it before, most likely, I'm guessing most people have if they're tuning into this and they know, mm -hmm. they know about how to respect it. But you have to respect it. That's the thing. You got to approach this thing, these things with um, just, I don't, yeah, I don't know another word, just respect. They're very powerful. Like you said, they're teachers. It might actually be another life form that's involved in this thing. Mm -hmm. So just approach it not as a recreational substance. Some people do. And I don't think, I think if you do approach it in that way, you could bad trip per se, or it just won't grant you the revelations that we're talking about right now. But if yeah. you do truly approach it, like in a sort of ritual or a ceremony, even if it's just yourself, yeah, you'll get the you'll get the message. <laughs> yeah, I call the mushrooms uh, the fun guys because you can <laughs> be very recreational with them and mm -hmm. just have fun. Like, and yeah. I did that too for a while, and that's oh yeah, great. But then when you get to like ayahuasca and other plants, like you kind of need a guide. You need a shaman. They're not they're not going to give you fun. <laughs> <laughs> you're just trying to. Like, it's yeah. a little deeper, a little more. I don't know how to even describe it, but it's, yeah, you need a little, you need a guide. Mm -hmm. A little more powerful. And I would recommend with mushrooms too, getting a guide. I know mm. some horrible stories of people, just kids playing around and then end up blowing their brains out. Oh, geez. They're just not in the right state, not ready, not, yeah, just too much pressure in life. And like, yeah, growing up yeah. in Chicago, there's some, some pressure. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's just like, you gotta i mean i was felt fine doing it alone and i always go into my own like, lane i think it's just kind of in my dna to do that mm -hmm. but i wouldn't recommend it for everyone to do that yeah i would say maybe i imagine you're a loner just by default right i can be i like community too but yeah i can definitely just go on my own like you're okay with being alone is what I'm yeah. saying, right? Yeah, you have to be okay with being alone. If you, especially if you're going to do psychedelics alone. <laughs> yeah. If you're not okay with being alone, which a lot of people are, unfortunately, not okay with being by themselves in their own thoughts, their own mind. If you're not okay with that, you're not going to be okay on psychedelics. So yeah, get a right. guide. Yeah, and then the group does help. You can actually tune into the group. Oh like, yeah, this collective energy kind of protects everyone and. Yeah, there's beauty in it too. So mm -hmm. I mean, there's a reason why a lot of communities and ceremonies are group group based. Yeah. And doing it in a group, I've never done it like in a big big group. Like just I've done it with select individuals. It's come to also provide proof for me that there is a sort of unified field of mind. You ever had like a mm -hmm. telepathic experience in a way that you kind of like, oh, we're linked up right now. <laughs> oh, not only with people, but with animals. That's where oh, yeah. my whole animal medicine came in. Yeah. Animal uh, medicine. Yeah, I love animal medicine. That was uh, a big part. That's why my name's Jordan Dragon. One of my 
power mm-hmm. animals as a dragon i okay. found out so it uh yeah on ayahuasca the way my shaman does it is a little different we go out into nature and we take it just in nature silence no singing no ikaros like we're just kind of on our own but we're in a group and the first time i did that the coyotes came and started yelling at this one person like and she has coyote medicine and then the owls came and started yelling at this other guy and he has owl medicine and like just this field was opened up like you said the unified field and the animals felt it and they came and with these messages and with this energy and just i was just blown away by how tied in everybody was and this lineage he's also tied into the native american lineage so we do sweat lodges and we connect to the land and like the place that he offers us is just the most magical like loving clean area i've been in in america it's just like this i can't even describe it but it's just paradise it's this little pocket of paradise wow and so just from there and then learning his animal medicine and then in one of my ceremonies i became a dragon and that's how that like came about and i just now i can tap into this dragon breath during my meditation and like really tune into it and yeah so there's all these different energies you even look like a targaryen (laughs) for sure (laughs) got that dragon energy yeah man now yeah i'm interested in that so what do you mean like you tap into you tap into like the spirit of the species and then embody that so you embody like the spirit of a dragon in your life yeah um so again going from that mundane to the magical that's like it's part of your part of that capital s self like we can tap into these different energies and frequencies yeah and so yeah one of the energies that came to me was that dragon essence and during the ceremony i was a dragon for hours and i was breathing like a dragon for hours like it was on i didn't even know but there's this crazy just breath was coming through me and again i think it goes back to that safety thing where i wasn't safe as a kid so this was like what is the safest creature in the world like nobody fucks with a dragon (laughs) yeah (laughs) so i just felt like this safety and this knowing of okay i can handle any situation and then it was a complete rebirth and death too like who i was is no longer a person we have a whole ceremony we redig a grave and we offer a, a burial to our old selves and so you're totally like transformed into this new way of being this new energy and yeah it's something that i can tap into whenever i'm going through something or i need some kind of guidance or an insight i can all right what would this dragon energy what would that do oh Um, i see yeah Mm. one of the offerings i do is animal totems are you familiar with that at all Mm -mm. so yeah uh i started down this rabbit hole studying gematria studying numbers and like i was trying to decode the matrix like what is what these numbers mean and Uh (laughs) there's cool insights from that too but oh, that, yeah somehow it led me to this animal card deck that the native people made and it's all tied to numbers but you pull nine different cards and each card is a representation of your chakras and then every card is also every 13 years of your life wow. so you'll go through certain energies every because every seven years we're reborn completely so every third it's like two rebirths you'll have different energies and that's helped me a lot navigating like what I'm going through and just having that as a guide to like, like right now I'm in my snake era. You could say I pulled snake for my third chakra and snake is all about death and rebirth and peeling that skin Mm. and just going through, like I've had knee surgery, totaled my car just and all these things just falling apart and falling apart and it's just like what is going on and it's like that snake is peeling back all these layers that i yeah. thought i was and i have to just go through snake bites and i have oh. to just endure this and yeah. then the next era is going to be 
it's the hawk is my next era so i'll be a yeah. more of a messenger and more of sharing all these trials and things that i went through which i can feel coming on now and flying like, freely yeah and seeing the picture and sharing the message of like yeah not, not being grounded with the snake which is so like on the earth opposite of flying yeah just, like, i see that so there's like messages in yeah. the animal and mm -hmm. it's messages in how they live Mm -hmm. yeah they're like symbols absolutely yeah. and yeah my soul talks to me more in symbols and words so it's... yeah yeah that's good soul talks more in symbols than words mm -hmm. you know what i feel like that's a higher form of communication right because there's an image holds a thousand words so it's like yeah exactly an image holds more data you want to look at it as data or information Mm -hmm. A word may just be like, it's just whatever the word is. Yeah. An image is just like you said, there's, there's so much more involved in it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more finely compressed. There's just literally more information. Mm -hmm. That's good, man. That's powerful stuff. Yeah. Wow. One of the techniques I learned is called the golden circle. And that's how I started talking with my soul and like communicating and so the process is first you go into innocence, go in no sense and just empty. That's that non-dual state. Get into that innocence, that childlike innocence. Just drop your whole story, drop everything. And then you visualize a golden circle and then you ask a question. And this is how I, I do this with people. If I need to do a reading with them or whatever, my own life. And then an image will come. And then from that image, you just state what is obvious. And then you just keep talking. And wow you'll just go on this roll and like I do the same thing with my videos on YouTube like I don't really know what I'm going to talk about but I get I do an image and then I'll kind of just start rolling and then I'll surprise myself with some of the things that come out because it's not really planned it's not mm. really coming from me it's coming from this download and so that's how I tap into that wow that's pretty cool man wow makes sense mm -hmm. when you think about it words and language it's almost very rudimentary. Is that the pinnacle of communication in a universal sense using mouth noises? Obviously, there's got to be higher forms of communication. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And uh, when I went down to Peru, the ancient ones, the people that built Machu Picchu, they communicated in ropes. And I'm always thinking about that. Rope. <laughs> yeah like they want to send a message they send a messenger with ropes tied to certain knots and certain wow so you just think about like <laughs> how do you communicate with rope like all right so this is so it's symbols it's symbols tied together so it's just a, a totem of symbols and it's just like wow that's like, crazy that's some next level yeah communication well you essentially what were you saying you don't you just don't need words like yeah I see the ropes and I have no idea, but from how you describe it, it's almost related to imagery because they see the image of the rope. Mm -hmm. hmm. it's, I just thought that was so cool. But yeah, yeah, language is very limiting. I think it's when you're on that psychedelic state and talk, thinking of language, it is just like, how is this work kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I love yeah. how you can break down etymology and certain words. Yeah in certain things and it's yeah. tied to other words and so like it, you said in no sense mm -hmm. i've never yeah. heard that before that's good I yeah i love <laughs> breaking down the words and seeing how it what it actually describes yeah yeah when you get into etymology you can see that words have multiple meanings mm -hmm. and you can trace its lineage in a way words almost have like a lineage and then you get to really what the deeper meaning is if you trace it down like the family tree of the word mm -hmm. and then you can even get into gematria like you said you get into like the number meaning behind it and you get into ancient languages like sanskrit and how it all relates and yeah there is power in words but it's more it's it involves more research you could say it involves a lot more time to see really what words mean it's more than just the dictionary definition <laughs> that you mm -hmm. may get yeah yeah i get that so the same thing with images as as we said there's a lot of data in an image there actually is a lot of data in a word but not at face value 
mm-hmm. you have to dissect it in a way. The, yeah. Like God doesn't mean God, but it's like the all encompassing. What does this mean? Like, it's just, yeah. you have to break it down. Like you said, you have to go into it and dissect it. Yeah. So there's Power just the word. I like to say that in a way, what we are is the word. We are language. That's an idea of Terrence McKenna. Like this whole world is a language, right? Mm-hmm. It's all just a form of communication. And that's the first sentence in the Bible, right? Well, one of the first sentences, the word became flesh. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think our primordial essence is language. It's information. And that information is decoded through us like it starts off we are all information and then at a grosser level it's the material you know like i said hierarchies before i think a higher part of the hierarchy of who and what we are is just this it's just this wavelength it's just the flow of information right i mean case in point close your eyes right now you can still hear me you still think it's me but you don't see me Mm -hmm. like what you are what I am is more so my voice rather than my body. It's almost like my body is an apparatus for my voice. It facilitates the voice to come into being. Mm -hmm. And that's really how we structure the world, right? Is through using the right words. There's so much power in the word. If you don't have your voice, what do you have? You can still definitely create images though. You still have power. You could create, you could paint, right? You can use your hands for sure but you lose a lot of power too if you don't have your voice. If you you lose your ability to create. I feel like that is like, if we were endowed with creation, like we described before, a big part of our endowment is using our voice. (laughs) It's sort of meta what we're doing right now. We're literally using our voice. (laughs) But in all facets of life, we use our voice to create. That's something special. Yeah. Yeah. Just got to make sure you're saying the right stuff. (laughs) because <laughs> you can destroy yeah. with your voice too absolutely mm-hmm. it's a powerful tool yeah man it's um it's uh how do i put this you either use it to create or destroy right and that's in all different parts how do i put this of the journey of embodiment you can either use the tools at your disposal to create alongside the creation or follow the path of entropy. That's the big difference. He who is not with me is against me, a wise man once said. So I feel as though once one is on this wavelength that we're speaking on, you can't help but create with the creation because you know if you're not, you're just destroying, right? And I know only a Sith deals in absolutes, (laughs) but it's sort of like that. You're sort of, you're either with the flow or you're against the flow. Mm -hmm. So... I know what team I'm on, but do you feel that? Do you feel as though that like, Oh yeah. You have to, there's an obligation. Sorry. No. Yeah. Uh, one of that download from my first five grams low in the dark, I disappeared also like, and I was going through my Facebook and I couldn't like, there was no ego. I could only see myself through other people's eyes. Mm -hmm. So I realized, Oh, it's not, me it's us it's like there's one consciousness yeah so when you can see that and know that like how am i helping consciousness am i exactly like you said, am i creating or am i destroying and i can't yeah. and no i can't ignore that like it's just <laughs> a knowing no. now that i have mm-hmm. like, we think we're separate i think that was a huge we're supposed to be separate we're supposed to learn how to be separate and be our own thing but we're also part of everything the mm-hmm. unified field mm-hmm and so, yeah, when you can see that and you start offering, how do I serve the collective? How do I serve other people? And then, yeah, that's a big, that's a game changer for sure. A big game changer. Yeah, man. We are simultaneously separate playing our role, but also maybe in a way we're more real to the others that view us. I've got that download before through a psychedelic mm-hmm. experiences that you in a way, in a certain way, I am more real to the ones that view me than how I think I'm real from this point of view. And I've yeah. never unsaw that. And you just described it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. It's like, how do we play our part here as an actor, as Gary? 
knowing deep down that we are everybody else and maybe everybody else viewing you is realer than how you feel you're real within your own head. Well, if you're one aspect of the hologram and there are millions of aspects of the hologram, they're going to have <laughs> more power exactly. than that one. Yeah, right. And that's a game changer. Like you said, that's when every the script flips. It's like, oh, oh, of course. That's the thing, too. Is it's so apparent. It's like, oh, my God, of course. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hidden in plain sight the whole time. Yeah, man. Wow. It's one time I took a bunch of mushrooms in the dark, heroic dose, and I saw a bunch of eyes all around me just looking at me. Mm. It, but it wasn't scary one may seem it's like it's scary but it was like just a bunch of eyes just looking and i saw that as a message there was some symbol in there and i think it's the it's the topic that we're talking about now is that it's like you're yeah you're more real to the other parts of the hologram the other vantage points than you are looking in from here very true man it's the unified field as you said mm -hmm. yeah and once you see it, you can't unsee that. You have to work with it or else you cause a suffering. That's really what it comes down to. It's like, how can I not? If I don't, if I ignore this, I'm ignoring the truth. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, I think you can do the, was it like Scyther or whatever in the Matrix where he goes back in the Matrix? He's just like, screw <laughs> it. I'm not doing that. Yeah. Like you can do that. Oh, for sure. You said you're going to, the back of your mind, you're going to know like, oh, mm. this is you're going to have some issues like <laughs> one more steak. Just give me the damn steak. Yeah. 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 We have the freedom to do so and ignore it. And I do. I'm not going to lie. I'm not perfect. None of us are perfect. We all ignore it. Right. But I think work in progress. Rome wasn't built in a day. That's okay. You know, it's, it's uh, we have a lot to work through. Some call it samskaras, karma. We have stuff to work through in order to become the fully realized being and see that always, see that vantage point at all times. And what that is like, I don't know. Is that you become God at that point? <laughs> I don't know. I think, yeah. If it was perfect, you'd be dead. So you have to actually embrace <laughs> yeah. that per imperfection. And, yeah. So have something to grow into. Yeah, exactly. Perfection is boring. There's something about imperfection that is why we came here. Yeah, we came from that world of perfection. Yeah. And we wanted to feel this imperfection. We wanted to grow through it. And yeah, it's the same. Perfection is the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me like a next stage in evolution, as in we're talking about perfection as in the ultimate unity, right? Ultimate non-duality, imperfection, separateness, the ego, right? That's the two mm -hmm. polar opposites that I can draw right now. But it seems like what we're creating, what we're evolving into, what we're remembering maybe is another... Like, so we have the two polar opposites, the yin and the yang. Now we're creating in a quantum way where it's almost like the third option where we are both. It's a simultaneous, it's almost, maybe that's why the triangle is so poignant for us. I work in threes. I love threes. Like, yeah. That's, yeah, exactly. The, the mind, body, spirit, right? There's something about three. And it's like the, the next stage in our evolution is drawing upon the relationship of the two polarities. So it almost creates another point. Not really. It's more so the relationship. It's the spirit, the Holy Spirit, as a Christian would say. I think that's what's happening. The embodiment process that we're talking about is neither polarity. They're there. We can recognize them in our head in a logical point of view. But it's like working with the heart to draw that into some kind of dance that we can't even, it's hard to describe where this is all going, but I can feel it. I feel that's true, right? Yep. Where this is all going on a collective level, what it looks like on the physical level. I don't know, but I think it's more toward cooperation, cohesiveness, world of love, kingdom of heaven, some just a better integration of both facets of our being. And that is what we're that's what we're doing. We're working with the perfect and imperfect to create like another part of our evolution. It's uh, yeah, wild times. <laughs> it's uh, I like to look at it like the daylight and nighttime. Like mm. it's just inhale, exhale. It's just part of the process. We're coming yeah. out of this dark night, and the sun is starting to shine, and then eventually the sun will go down again, and it'll get dark again. And it's just mm. like part of the heartbeat of the world. Yeah. It's part of the breath of the world. Yeah. I used to get like all upset about the darkness. Like, why does it have to be so dark? But then oh, yeah. it's like, oh, well, without the darkness, there'd be no light. Like there's exactly. no contrast. You got to really 
embrace it all embrace the contrast yeah don't resist it either that's the thing and especially within yourself we all have the darkness we all got the beast within you could say so you got to embrace that in order to bring in more light that's the thing too Mm -hmm. yeah in a way it's like um if you embrace the story altogether of gotham and batman you have to embrace the joker right in order Mm -hmm. for batman to be so cool to be batman he wouldn't be batman without the villains you need the villains in order to make batman that cool so it's the same thing it's mm-hmm. the same thing with the light and the dark in order for there to be the light the darkness in a way has to hold it mm-hmm. it's so <sighs> easy to see the potential though of like we could have free energy we could have yeah. people invent motors that run on water and they just yeah. get murdered it's like yeah, we yeah. have everything we need we could totally be free and like in this next level of cooperation and it's just like all right what do we have to do like what how many how long is it i guess it just takes longer and harder than you think it's gonna be yeah that's the adventure though yeah exactly if it just and i think embracing the darkness doesn't mean like working with the darkness so it doesn't mean like um so i guess for instance in your point of view it's like we recognize the darkness, but we, we transmutate the energy of, of the ignorance of people killing people that create free energy. We don't fight fire with fire. Like we don't yeah. wage war with them. We recognize that it's a thing and we fight in our own way, in our own way of the light, you could say, almost like Gandhi did, right? Mm-hmm. Like he didn't wage war. He waged war within through consciousness and he won. So it's in that way. It's like recognize that, yeah, definitely there's darkness, but we're not going to fight it in the same way that the darkness fights. That's a very important point. Yeah. Yeah. That's the path of the sage, I feel. Transmutation. Yeah. It's actually in the Emerald Tablets. I read that recently. He talks about, um, Thoth talks about transmutation and the power of transmutation. That's really what's going on here. And this was thousands of years ago. I don't even know when that was written, but it was a long time ago. Some ancient esoteric text, the Emerald Tablets, I recommend to everyone. But he talks about that. That's what we're doing here. That's the point of um, a realized being in a way is to transmutate that and to refine the world into a better world, but not through the old ways. We create a new way of doing that altogether. And I think Mm -hmm. it's happening, man. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of setbacks, you could say. But slowly but surely, we're getting there to a better world. Just the fact that we're having this conversation, right? People probably tune in in the future. And um, we don't have to worry about getting burnt at the stake. <laughs> because we would have. We're talking like this, you know, 100 years ago, 200 years oh, ago. Yeah. Absolutely. So the fact that we have this and freedom of speech to be able to do this gives me hope, you know? There's progress for sure. Yeah. And you can see it, yeah, just talking to like-minded people and finding other people. It's like, I don't think... You, we couldn't connect like this back in the 60s when they had another revolution yeah, of the literally. mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So they kind of started it, but they got squashed. And now it's like, are you going to squash? I mean, I guess they could shut the internet off. But even then, yeah. it feels like the collective energy. And we, I already know these things. Like, yeah. I'm going to continue sharing and talking about it with people. So, yeah. Amen to that, man. Find the others. Mm-hmm. In that regard, I feel as though it's too late. We already opened up Pandora's box. Too many people know. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you could shut off the internet. That would never happen. I think that's unrealistic because you shut off the world. (laughs) 2020 was pretty close. I mean, all they did. You got a point there. Yeah, you got a point there. Shut off the internet, which I wouldn't be surprised. Okay. You know what? Maybe. But still, like you said, you know, and I know now. And there's thousands of other people that know all around the world. And if that happened, that would only be a catalyst i think more so into the consciousness revolution the revolution that will not be televised if they shut down the internet or highly censored the internet which is very possible for sure it's happened but if they start Mm -hmm. censoring stuff like this and talking about free energy and you know the list goes on freeing just freeing in general liberation in general if they start censoring that that's only going to um create a catalyst like i said and trajectory into freeing oneself like the darkness will only bring more so people to the light it'll definitely create a lot of ignorance but i think out of that ignorance will also propel others into like yo there's something up here (laughs) Mm -hmm. what's up with this 
And uh, yeah, I think that's how we all get on the path is the darkness brings us to the light. Right. Sure. You, you think like there's something up here, whether it's within, without both. And you're like, it's got to be another way. And there is. <laughs> it is mm -hmm. the way. The way is the way. Absolutely. Right. It's all part of the journey. It all brings us. It's all for us. I think that's how we kind of started this conversation. It's all for us. Mm -hmm. When you can see that. Yeah, man. It, it is. Amen. Well, um, might be a good note to wrap this up at, to be honest with you. <laughs> Do you have anything else you want to say? No, that, yeah, that was a great bow to the end of this conversation. <laughs> yeah. Find the others and it's all for us. <laughs> mm -hmm. For sure. Well, thank you for coming on here, man. I appreciate your time, effort, and wisdom that you brought to this conversation. And uh, that's it. Keep doing your thing. I wish you all the best. Yeah. If you want to find more uh, on YouTube, it's Earth Soul Garden. Uh, you can check out my website, Jordan J. Dragon. I love working with people, helping people on the path, finding the way. And yeah, appreciate you letting me come on and talk. Of course. I'll put everything down in the description for people to find you. That's it. Peace and love to you. And peace and love to everybody that listens to this law. Awesome.